How's it going everyone? My name is Case and in this video we are taking a look at the 2021 Indian Challenger Limited and we're going to walk through every one of its design elements, technology features, and performance components and there's a lot to check out so let's get right into it. At the front end of this video I want to start by talking about the front end of the motorcycle and we have to start with this really cool design element at the end of the fender. This is Indian's logo, which they've integrated into this very old school badge, but it's not purely old school because there are some very modern design elements. For one thing, you can see around this head, there's almost a shadow of it in this different textured metal, but the coolest part of this badge is this LED lit line that goes right along the outside. Moving up to the fairing, you can see the primary headlight with, of course, high and low beam, as well as some running lights on the sides. And just to the outside of the running lights, you can see your turn signals are integrated right here as well. Moving on to the rest of this fairing, you get a little Indian badge at the front with this old school scripted font. And right above that, two vents that seem to be functional they almost have a NACADUCT design to them, so almost a little bit of performance flair to it. If you watched our This Just In video, you would have seen that this fairing has a particularly cool power feature, and that is this windshield that with the press of a button on the handlebar can be raised and lowered. And this windshield, like most on a lot of these baggers, has a little vent of its own. Press the button, drops right back down. Looking at this fairing in general and all of the bodywork on this motorcycle, one of the most amazing things is the quality of the paint job. This appears to be an automotive grade paint job and that's probably part of the reason that this is such an expensive motorcycle. This limited version right here starts at $27,999. Perfect. Around the outside of the turn signal you can find yet another vent in this fairing and even around the outside of it Look at that. It's uh, like a little bit of wind Shielding maybe that helps keep some of the wind off of you Maybe it gives the bike downforce taking a look at the end of the handlebar You can see we've got this huge block of polished metal which all of these buttons sit on and that's necessary because there are a lot of buttons to control all of the technology on this motorcycle and Alex in just a moment is going to show you all of that but Taking a further look at some of this design, you can see it says Indian here on the grip. It does the same on the other side. There's even an Indian logo here in the mirror. No shortage of logos that show you what kind of motorcycle you're riding. Right here in between the fairing, underneath the handlebar, right behind the front forks, there's another logo down there. Why? Why not? Right? Might as well. <laughs> Moving on to my favorite thing about Indian motorcycles is the design of the engine. As you can see, we've got some textured metal here at the head with the Indian logo, a very nice grayish engine block, and then moving down to this cover right here, it's got this awesome Indian motorcycle 1901 plate over the top of it, and then an interesting mixture of textured and very smooth polished metal towards the front of the cover, which makes it just a little bit more interesting than a purely polished smooth engine cover like you get on a lot of motorcycles. Moving to the other side of the engine, you can see the very bright and large exhaust pipes sticking out. And something that a lot of cruisers and baggers do is they have a little shield over the top of the exhaust, which makes it just a little bit more presentable However, if you look closely, you can see where that shield ends, and if that's something that bothers you, exhausts are pretty easy items to replace, and I'm sure there are a lot of companies that are going to build very cool exhaust for this motorcycle. But these two pipes come together with this very smooth line on this shield, then split off into two at the back. You've only got two brake lights which also double as your turn signals and that keeps everything fairly clean. There's not too much going on here. The Indian Challenger has some pretty interesting design elements including its front wheel design. 
As you can see around the outside, you've got this very sporty looking red stripe. And that helps you realize maybe this isn't your average old school bagger. You can also tell that because it's got a very low profile tire. Now moving on to the wheel itself, you can also see these elements where it almost looks like they've shaved off some of the black so you get this polished silver. But one of the things that I find most interesting at the front here is the way that this Brembo brake is mounted. Instead of bolting up closer to the hub, the arms that hold this disc on are kind of like a, a third of the way down the spoke. So you get this interesting, almost floating design. Moving just behind the disc itself, you see this is a Brembo caliper. So you have good stopping power, especially because there's not just one of them, there's two. Now it makes perfect sense to have the rear wheel on this motorcycle match the front, but it is funny to see this red line and these shaved elements of silver on the black spokes on a wheel that you really can't actually see much at all. Now, right in the middle here, you can see this is a belt drive bike that's very common for larger American cruisers and touring bikes and baggers because it's very smooth. You get that nice engagement because that belt has a little bit of stretch to it. And that elasticity makes it just that much more comfortable. One other cool design element here if you look at this foot pad, you can see a little gap in between its metal base and the actual platform you put your foot on, and that helps you isolate some vibrations just to keep your foot from getting numb or uncomfortable. How's it going everyone? This is Case from TFL Bike with our Ride Smarter Tip of the Month brought to you by Rider Justice. We all know riding two up is one of the great aspects of riding a motorcycle. But did you know that your insurance may not cover your passenger or that insurance coverage can differ if your passenger is married to you or not? Or that your passenger may not be covered if you caused the accident? Neither did I. That's why you want to make sure you carry a healthy amount of uninsured slash underinsured coverage as well as liability insurance. Shoot for at least $250,000 of uninsured coverage and more if you can afford it. On most premiums, that works out to a couple extra bucks a year, and it's worth it to protect you and the ones you love. To learn more about how to ride smarter with common sense tips anyone can follow, go to riderjustice.com, the champions of biker rights, on the road, in the courtroom, and now across the country. All right, let's talk about some of the tech features with this Indian, and I want to start with the key because it's pretty interesting. Uh, you have this nice Indian script and then lock and unlock right there. You also have just a traditional key that you can pull out, just like a car, in case you need to access something if the battery's dead, but you don't need to really use this. You just keep it in your pocket, just like a car. You kind of have keyless entry, so hop up to the bike, and right down here by my right knee, we have a rocker switch for lock and unlock. So if I hit the unlock button, you can kind of hear the bike unlock, I can then come up here to the handlebar and it will let me hit the power button, bring the bike to life, you can hear the fuel pump, and uh, if I wanted to start it, I could do that from there. You also down here have a little release for the fuel uh, filler right there, so you hit that, you can hear it kind of unlock, and then you can push this tab and flip it open. Now, the coolest part about this kind of keyless entry system is the side cases. So when you unlock the bike, the side cases unlock, and all you have to do is push down and they open up. I've owned a motorcycle with side cases and uh, all the time I would start the bike up, let it warm up, and then I would remember that I needed something out of here like my gloves to go home in. Um, so I'd have to shut the bike down, pull the key out, and uh, with this system you really don't have to do that. You don't have to worry about it. And then you can just put your stuff in here, hit lock, you can hear it lock, hit it again. You get a funny little beep, just like you would in a car. And now these side cases are totally locked down and uh, your stuff is super secure. It's a great system. I haven't been a fan of keyless entry on motorcycles up until now, but when you have these side cases, I really think it's a great feature. You can see the seven inch touchscreen come to life with a nice little animation right there. 
Uh, and I like the combination of new school and old school tech on this bike. So up top, you have your speedometer and tachometer uh, and some warning lights in each of them. You have a little LCD screen in each. This shows you your uh, fuel remaining and your range. This one shows you your gear indicator and total mileage. There's some other cool stuff in here. For example, you have a tire pressure light, um, cruise control lights right there. So just a lot of features you wouldn't necessarily find on a smaller motorcycle. Now coming down to this screen here, this is where it gets really fun and really interesting. This is the ride command system, uh, basically from Polaris, so if you're familiar with you know, the slingshot or any of the Polaris side-by-sides, this is going to be very familiar. You have different map layers here, so not only do you have traffic, but you also have weather, which is sweet. Um, so it's a pretty clear day here in Colorado, so there's not much, but if we go over to the western side of the country, you can see a little bit of blue there, so there's some snow, uh, definitely an area you wouldn't want to ride through. So this navigation will actually uh, route you away from the weather and keep you safe. You also have a little magnifying glass right here. You can search for addresses, set a home waypoint. Uh, you have different attractions where you can um, you know, find what's around here and find something cool when you're out in the middle of nowhere getting lost. Uh, also, you have these four buttons down below, which I like. I like that you have a mix of touch and tactile buttons. Uh, so this will cycle through kind of your general display. So you have uh, distance remaining till empty, you have the battery voltage, you have oil life, uh, tire pressures right there, which is pretty cool. Uh, they're blank right now because the bike is powered off, but those will come to life when you start the motor. Really cool little graphic of the bike there. It's not some generic thing. You can see that is a pretty accurate representation of this bike. Some more information down here on this side. You can go to the next screen. You have a little trip computer, which shows you really cool stuff like elevation change and total distance, total stop time and moving time. Now there's the phone icon here. So this shows all of Case's recent calls. Also, you you have some music controls here, so a few different sources, FM and AM, weather radio, Bluetooth, and USB and iPod. You also, down here in this little cubby, have a USB connection, um, and that will be for charging your phone, but also for Apple CarPlay. Kind of unfortunate that it's called CarPlay. Um, but yeah, good spot for your phone. Now if I go into the settings page here, there's a few more things. This is how you change through your different riding modes. So you have rain, standard, and sport, traction control on and off. You also have a uh, brightness setting for the display, which is maxed out right now. You can also go into notifications, which there are none right now. And then you can dive further into all the settings of the bike, get your total miles, uh, engine hours on the bike, and next service, VIN, all that kind of stuff there. Uh, we can go down to general. <laughs> this is where it gets kind of crazy. You have night and day mode, just like a car GPS. Um, you have low fuel navigation prompts, so it'll route you to the nearest gas station. Uh, time is set based on GPS, which I've never seen on a motorcycle before. You have an equalizer, so you can adjust all your different sound settings and really tune in the sound system. You can also fade it between front and rear. Uh, so just tons of stuff. Volume control for when you're um, you know, going up to speed, it will raise the volume. And then something really cool, cylinder deactivation, uh, which is something I haven't seen on a motorcycle either. You can turn that on or off. There is just so much to go through, so much to play with. Uh, it's really never ending, but probably my favorite part is the sound system, 100 watt sound system with these two speakers up front. So let's play some royalty free music and uh, see exactly what this sounds like. That is just incredibly loud. It's crazy how loud this gets. That wasn't even full volume. I think I had another click or two. I don't want to make all the dogs angry over there at the dog park, but wow, this thing gets loud. Uh, you do have a little volume rocker over on this side. The bike just shut down because the motor's not running and it's been on for too long, but that's how you adjust the volume. There's a few other menu controls. Uh, you also have these triggers up top. And to be honest, it's not extremely intuitive. The volume is just up and down for the volume, but uh, the controls kind of change as you go from the music section to the map section to the phone section. So you never know exactly what button you're gonna be pressing to go to the next screen or cycle through the menus. The touch screen's really easy to use. I just wish the uh, hand controls were a little more intuitive. All right, so next to this phone cubby up here, we have a little port for heated gears. So you plug your heated gear in right there 
and uh, you should be able to stay warm when riding through the winter. This is a good bike for that too. You have tons of wind protection with this big fairing up front. You also over on the left side have another one of these deep cubbies and then there's this little blank port right here uh, with the Indian logo. The other side of course is where your heated gear would go into and I'm kind of wondering why Indian didn't put a little 12 volt port right there. It'd be nice just to have a little bit of extra power in case you wanted to uh, plug your phone in or something. Now to go along with the tech theme there's also this ride command app which is pretty cool so you go into there I'm not logged in or anything yet but uh, you can go to the community page look at other people's rides there's a whole rating system in there it'll tell you the distance and how long it takes to do it you can download these and then uh, upload them into the navigation of the bike that way you don't need to be constantly checking your phone uh, you can do the same thing on the computer you can also uh, make your own routes track your rides and uh, manage your bikes um, service information, pretty much everything you need to know about the bike you can do through this app. So pretty cool and uh, just an easy way to plan your rides and keep track of your bike. You can't actually see all the tech on this bike. There's a few features that are hidden, but they're always gonna be there and always gonna be helping you out. Indian calls this their smart lean technology. It's basically a six axis IMU from Bosch that measures lean angle and takes that data and uh, puts it into some other features of the bike to make you more safe. So the first one is uh, a smart traction control system. So it's going to measure your lean angle and uh, adjust the intervention of the traction control system to make sure that you stay safe. The same thing happens with the ABS on both the front and the rear wheels. It's going to measure your lean angle and uh, modulate braking pressure to make sure that you don't lose the front end or anything and dump the bike and then the last one is drag torque control so when you're downshifting or you put in too much throttle and the bike detects too much rear wheel slippage it'll adjust the amount of torque delivered to the rear tire and uh, keep you safe and keep you upright hopefully that is a lot of technology features but not every bit of technology on this motorcycle is purely software. There's a lot of hardware that they've added, which does a lot. So let's check out some of the performance components on this motorcycle. Starting with these inverted forks, well, that alone is something very unique in the bagger class of motorcycles. Now, some people suppose that inverted forks are meant to reduce unsprung weight, and while that might be true, actually one of the biggest reasons to have inverted forks is because these larger diameter tubes at the top are stiffer than if you had this flipped around with the thinner tubes at the top. Now, whether or not that's going to affect your ride depends on how hard you're pushing your motorcycle. So if you do plan to take this out and seriously carve some windy roads, that could make a difference. This you see here is a hydraulically adjustable Fox monoshock. We pulled off the side cover to get a better look at it, and monoshocks are very common on sport bikes, not so common on baggers and cruisers. One of the reasons is because dual shocks a lot of times can be better for carrying a larger load, whereas monoshocks can have more accurate damping characteristics because there aren't two independent valves working separate from each other, so a lot of times you can have more equal pressure exerted by a monoshock such as this. Directly behind the monoshock you can see this adjustment right here for the rear suspension and it's got eight different settings, which actually is a lot. Of course the most important slice of this high performance pie is the engine. This is a 1768 cc water-cooled four-valve V-twin. 122 horsepower and 128 pound-feet of torque. And a couple of the items I just mentioned there are pretty unique in this class of baggers and large touring motorcycles. For one, like I mentioned, it's water-cooled. Most of the competition here has air-cooled engines and one of the advantages of being water-cooled is that you even out some of the heat spots on the motor. Another advantage for specifically a bike that you're going to ride a lot on the highway and perhaps in traffic is that some of the heat from the motor gets moved forward towards the radiator, which means you might be a little more comfortable on a hot summer day. Being four valves per cylinder, you also get better airflow, which helps you out with power, especially at the top end. I've noticed while riding this bike just briefly 
that you have this kind of high-pitched whirring noise in the top end that sounds very similar to some four valve per cylinder metric bikes. So let me know in the comments if you think it's the same thing here, but uh, let's take a quick listen because it's a pretty unique sound. Be sure to stay tuned because very soon we are going to take this Indian Challenger out on the road and do a full review where we'll talk a little bit more about some of this motorcycle's competition and also how it rides. Until then, be sure to head over to tflbike.com for more of the latest news, views, and real world reviews, and we'll see you in the next one. I'm about to reposition this bike into the light because we're losing light, and uh, another quirk of this motorcycle is that even though it has a lightweight cast aluminum frame, with a full tank of fuel, it weighs 840 pounds, which in the realm of your typical motorcycle, that's a lot. It's also a big motorcycle. From front to back, this thing is almost as long as my truck.